guys know how much I love Call of Duty. And if you did not know, now you know because I told you. Um, but Call of Duty last week had their multiplayer reveal for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, which is pretty much like just a return to the basic Black Ops that I love. They're promising yep. boots on the ground combat. They teased yep. zombies, which yep. I am super hyped about. Zombies is one of those modes in Call of Duty. It just sucks your life. Like all winter, yep. I will just stay hibernated in my home playing zombies with my friends that choose to enter my den because I do not leave because of zombies. Um, but they also revealed other things as well in multiplayer. The big one, I think most notably, has to be the fact that vehicles is going to play a huge role in multiplayer and potentially change up how we play multiplayer. Um, mm -hmm. Vehicles will be included in different maps, different modes, as mm -hmm. well as um, new modes that they're introducing. One of them being a VIP escort missions, which for me, if you guys think of when you think of escort missions in video games, okay, you think back to like Metal Gear, you think back to Rainbow Six, all of yep. those missions yep. suck. So why would you create a mode for it? Well, they're it's doing it where yeah, it, 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 it is a good question. <laughs> but when you look into it a bit more, it's actually really cool what they're doing because you're playing with your friends. Obviously, it's multiplayer. And one person in your group would be uh, labeled the VIP. They yep. are equipped with a pistol. They're equipped with some intel, which mm -hmm. could help them spot enemies and help the team protect them. So that's a really cool mode now that I'm interested in playing just because um, it could test my friendships with other people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like yeah. VIP is a little weird for Call of Duty just because really? of how quick you die in the game. You know? That's like, true. I feel like I feel like it works the best in Halo. VIP, okay. even though it's I don't even think it's that fun in Halo, but it works the best in Halo because there's like you have enough health, you have enough resources, and like there's enough skill involved to be able to actually play the game. And the VIP has like that overshield and all that. So like mm -hmm. I feel like VIP is a little fun in Halo, but that's that's the extent to where I think that mode kind of works. But we'll see. I mean, I haven't but played it yet, so I don't know. A good point, which which I want to talk about a bit more. You think VI you said you think VIP mode is kind of weird for a Call of Duty because you die. It's fast paced. Call of Duty yeah. is a very fast paced shooter. You die, you come back, you keep going at it again and again. However, yeah. I feel like what they're doing and what Treyarch is doing here with Black Ops Cold War is they're really trying to expand it past what we actually know Call of Duty to be. They yes. said it's going to be cross-platform, which we knew to expect, um, mm -hmm. and that's really cool, but it's also going to be cross-generational. So mm -hmm. this is a Call of Duty that is going to be long-lasting, and I think for yep. them to do that, they do have to switch up, not necessarily switch up their modes, but add new modes that may be able to gain the attention of people who play Halo, of people who may play Rainbow Six. And they have other modes as well that is focused yeah. more on tactical as aspects and strategizing rather than just shooting and going for the, your target. That you you do make a good point. This they're they're trying to they're trying to innovate. They have to try and innovate, right? They can't just reskin Call of Duty every single year, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, I I guarantee that two weeks after the launch of the game, people are just going to be playing the the same game modes that they always play. With <laughs> Call of Duty. Everyone's everyone's just going to jump into domination. Everyone's just going to jump into team deathmatch. Maybe they have a couple people in free for all, and that's it. That'll be the or search and destroy, of course, as well for yeah, all the competitiveness a, that comes from one, that. Yeah. Um, but then besides that, like all the other ones, they'll be populated enough for you to find a game, but they won't be the same. They, they won't be the main core game modes that everybody wants yeah. to try out when they play Call of Duty. Yeah, I understand the, the, right. the attempt. I understand what they're trying to do. You, you make a good point. Bring in some people maybe from Halo who liked VIP there or just to try something different. Cool. But at the end of the day, the core audience, they they know what they're getting these games for. You know? Oh, and, and they know. And I think you you are absolutely right. People are, are going to try these modes out. Majority of the players are going to try these modes out and then go back to TDM, a uh, hardcore, uh, like hard points, um, search and destroy, like all those different modes, zombies. Yep. But I think they do need to expand to have those niches. Because mm -hmm. what Call of Duty is doing, especially with the introduction of Warzone um, earlier, was it last year or earlier this, this year? year? 
this year is like feeling like forever. I yeah. don't know when it ended or when it will <laughs> end. When did it start? We're in a time um, loop. But yeah, when when <laughs> But when Warzone came out and the popularity that gained, I think what that did for them is really open their eyes into how they could expand the franchise beyond just, you know, rotating through Modern Warfare, Black Ops, and mm -hmm. all those other iterations. Um, and with making this multi-generation or cross-generational, that's the term they're trying to push, um, mm -hmm. And they're making sure that players know whatever happens in Cold War will affect Warzone. Whatever happens in Warzone will affect yeah. Cold War. And if they're going to continue this throughout different releases, I think they're thinking in their heads, if one of these niches, like say VIP Escort pops off, they may be able to release this as a niche title on its own to maybe have a competitive scene around, right? Like, you know, I, I, that's probably really ambitious and further down the line. But I think putting it out there will create those stepping stones for them to see where else they could go to. Because let's face it, Activision is all about making that money. And wherever they can make that money, they will. Yeah. No, I, I you're you're making you're making excellent points. And I don't disagree with you. So, I mean, well, the, you know what, though? I think what I like the most in the reveal and just seeing the new Call of Duty is... And and this is extremely important in terms of like Warzone is it mm -hmm. looks very similar to Modern Warfare just in terms of like aesthetics, the way that they're like the way that the guns look, the way that you the customization works in the game, it's all pretty in line with Modern Warfare. Mm -hmm. And I'm also just intrigued, just in general, talking about Warzone, what the plan is with Warzone. Mm -hmm. Like, are they going right. to let Warzone live on? as modern warfare and just let that be something that that is in cold war as an option to play or will now warzone just kind of leave the uh the core call of duty games and just straight up become its own thing you know i think, I I think, think the later is what they're doing so i think yeah. it's becoming its own thing um yeah. and then what they're doing is the other games that come out will adjust how Warzone is played, but I think they're keeping the core of war modern warfare mechanics um, yeah. in yeah. the game and like different guns from other titles like Cold War will be implemented or wars in Warzone or like different events that have to do with Cold War will happen in Warzone for a limited time. Mm -hmm. no, I, I totally yeah. agree. And I think that because it's a free to play game, uh, you can just download Warzone, don't have to purchase uh, the base game. I think they set themselves up in a really interesting way where they can leave the Verdance map, the the initial uh, Warzone map, and then just transition over to Cold War, introduce a new Black Ops map, have everything carry over, and then just let the community transition on their own. They don't have to force it like a lot of online games do, where they introduce a quote-unquote sequel and then have to worry about losing some players. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really what happened with thing. Black Ops Four, right? They yeah. had the Blackout. they had the battle royale on Black Ops Blackout, right? Blackout, and, yeah. And it just kind of died. <laughs> Everyone yeah. was like, "Okay, but it's not free to play, and yeah. there's a new Call of Duty coming out next year. So what the hell's going to happen with this one?" And now with Warzone being free to play and blowing up, being so huge, I just the only thing I don't see them doing is if they were to transition it into Cold War, I don't see them changing the gameplay. Like I feel like yeah. it's still going to be Call of Duty Modern Warfare in, in its uh, design. Yes. I just wonder if they update it with Cold War to maybe add in like the weapons from Cold yeah. War right. and to, to add in, yeah. you know, like stuff like that. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, but that is probably what I'm most intrigued about when it comes to Cold War's launch. Yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, the story looks like it's going to be pretty cool. So that's, that's Yo, the graphics look amazing, by the way. It looks like, good. It looks pretty it looks good. Crap! The yeah. maps. There's this map in the African. Oh, what is it? Angola. It's um one of the maps mm -hmm. that they revealed. Um, mm. and it takes place in an African desert, and it looks freaking beautiful because it's like the satellite crash landed there, and you know there's these high there's peaks that are really good if you're able to get up there, but you need to really be comfortable with close combat to do that because it yeah. also has whole outer side of the map where it's yeah. just sniper haven so it's like it looks so beautiful too like the sand something mm -hmm. as basic as the sand just looks really great um i know that they're trying to obviously uh use uh photo realisms or photo what do you call it photo yeah. 
Uh, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Sure. Okay. I think so. I think so. Are you talking about ray tracing? But yeah, so it's ray tracing, but photo illumination, something like that. Sure. Tech like term, reference. tech term, but it makes it look really real. Like it just in the Miami level, um, Boy, it, yeah. it, that looks really nice. It's like has that Miami Vice feel. Um, take and that's their nighttime map, so it takes place at nighttime, and it's just a, a, it's a place where chaos will happen because you just have this <laughs> long strip of just road and you could go down that uh, but you're probably going to die so you have to get really creative on how you're going to move uh, through these maps so i'm really interested in seeing all the maps like you aaron yes i'm interested to see what will happen with Warzone. you yeah. mentioned before with blackout uh, blackout sorry that that flopped i think blackout why it flopped is because it was too black ops and black ops is hard to play for people yes. that are used to shooters because it plays a little different um, that's why Warzone was more accessible. Yeah, a lot of and and I mean Warzone, Warzone being free to play too is yes, huge. Yes, free to huge. play huge. is huge, but also like Warzone is pretty comparable to Battlefield. Um, so yeah. you get a lot of those yeah. users that like Battlefield hopping into Warzone. So I really do feel like they're going to keep that design of modern warfare. But like Steve said, if they're able to change up the map, you know, like so you leave Verdansk. Or just add like, yeah, like a Cold War specific yeah. map. Exactly. Yeah. As yeah. two different options. That could be fun. Yeah. yeah like Which is something the game needs. In my I agree. It's a new yeah. location. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. And even like we've seen it before with Fortnite, how they do these mm -hmm. events that change up their map, right? Yep. Uh, I feel like they could do that with Warzone. And they're always changing up things in Warzone. Like one week you'll have Juggernaut available. The next week you don't. like. So I feel like they're open to playing around with how that will look. And, and yeah. I'm just really excited uh, for you guys. Did you – I'm guessing, uh, Steve, Aaron, you saw the reveal. Alex, you're a little quiet, so I'm guessing you did not. Um, but for <laughs> you guys that can see the reveal, <laughs> she's not <laughs> – and shooters she's always playing league yeah <laughs> i'm definitely like the most non-gamer gamer yeah non-gamer gamer for sure i've learned but a lot from you guys no honestly though <laughs> we learned a lot from you we learned a lot from you but uh for steve because aaron you did give me a little bit of a background of what you're most excited yeah. to see steve, do you have something that really stood out to you besides warzone uh, so I always have a love-hate relationship with Call of Duty. Uh, a lot of the times I, I find myself compelled to play, especially this generation. Uh, I've been let down con constant times, whether it's because it's like certain mechanics or stuff like that. But looking at this one, I think they, they have like a really compelling offering with new modes. Uh, they're doing some care with like the intricate mechanics, uh, like score streaks uh, are no longer lost on death. I think that's really cool. Uh, unlimited sprint, auto uh, health regen, that's stuff that really needs to be in the core game. And I think that they flubbed in previous iterations. So yeah. I'm really excited to see stuff like that. Uh, but Warzone at the end of the day has ruined me for Call of Duty. I, I've been obsessed with Warzone throughout this entire year. So nice. as soon as I saw all the the maps, the vehicles and all that, I'm like, okay, so how does this play into Warzone? That's what I really want to see. And I know that they touched on it just a little bit saying, you know, stuff's going to transfer over. And I'm really excited to see what they do with that platform because I think that is going to be a really core element to Call of Duty moving forward. Uh, yeah, the yeah. other thing I, I wanted to touch on um, that a lot of, I haven't seen a lot of people actually talk about is that this is going to be one of the first Call of Duty games that is co-developed. Yes. Um, a lot of people don't right. really give a lot of credit to Raven, uh, one of Activision's other uh, development studios. They usually do support stuff or I think going all the way back to World War II or yeah, uh, World at War, uh, they go all the way back there. But this they is the first one that, with yeah, Korea. a whole bunch. And this is the first one that it seems like they're developing it side by side with Treyarch. Uh, if you see some of the promotional stuff, they actually have their name on it, which is which hasn't been seen before. Uh, and then they also have Beanox, who's doing like the the PC port. But it, it's actually really cool to see someone who's actually been in a support role uh, in Activision kind of step up and and handle it with Treyarch. Yeah. I'm really excited yeah. to see what they turn out this year. And mm -hmm. I think that 
all stems from Raven having a huge part in Warzone's success. Yes. Um, they lended a lot of support to uh, Warzone and Infinity Ward in terms of making sure that that game runs smoothly and that it is successful. So I feel like that kind of gave them um, the... I was going to say something that I'm not going to say. I was going to say the balls. Uh, to kind of step up. Well, you said it. <laughs> step up to Activision and be like, hey, like this is something that we did for you guys that is now like th one of the leading battle royales yeah. on Twitch. Like, what are you going to do about it with us continuing this relationship? They have a little room to negotiate. And it's great, like you mentioned, Steve, that they are now um, de co developing. Uh, Cold War with Treyarch. Mm -hmm. and, and kind of working off what you just said, Call of Duty is always on this three-year cycle where it goes from Infinity Ward, typically it's Sledgehammer right after, and then it ends with Treyarch. Sledgehammer isn't involved in this one. Uh, so it kind of, I don't know, like I, I want to see how this plays out because I kind of have a feeling that Raven's going to take Sledgehammer's position. And maybe in a couple of years, we'll see them just develop a game on their own. It'll be very interesting to see how this all plays out. I never really thought about it until you mentioned it, and you may be on to something. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out, definitely. Yeah. There's this inner working in Activision, you know, beef between the studios. It's, it's kind of cool. You know what we have to do, Steve? We have to go <laughs> undercover and <laughs> unravel oh. the whole mystery of where yeah. the hammer in this whole Wait, we need to get muted. We don't want them to see this. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, crap. All right. <laughs>